Welcome back to Castle Class Presents Roll20. I'm your host, Corey Longnecker. Um, this is a Macalites production. We are a subset of the Castle Mac crew, uh, who you can find on twitch.tv slash Castle Mac. Uh, they stream a lot of games. I am one of the DMs on their Macalite shows, which is every other Monday. We have uh, another stream show every other Wednesday, but the primary shows are on Sundays and Tuesdays. They are live games DM'd by Steven on Sunday nights and Sean on Tuesday nights. Excellent, excellent games, a lot of fun. I highly suggest you check them out. Um, but what we're covering here is kind of a how-to for pro account users of Roll20, um, how to get your game set up, and how to really leverage some of the cool features that uh, Roll20 offers their pro account uh, subscription holders. Primarily, that's going to be APIs. Uh, we are not going to be getting into APIs today. Today, we will be covering things that any DM can use at any level, um, pro account, plus account, whatever. Uh, it makes no difference today. These are, these are open to everybody. But this is basically a we're building our foundation um, for what we're going to be doing down the road. So I've already created a game, as you can see here. It's uh, just a basic, <laughs> just a basic template, and it's ready to go. So things I've already done. I've already chosen the 5e OGL uh, sheet because I primarily play D and D 5e, and I like that sheet. And a lot of the APIs that I use, some of them do leverage the OGL sheet. So I choose the OGL sheet in my setup. Um, once you are back to this screen and you're ready to go, here's where we're going to be doing a lot of our work. So today we're really gonna be covering game settings and we're gonna be pretty quick. This is gonna be a fairly short video. Um, we're really just gonna kind of run through this and get your foundation set up. There's really not a lot to do here. Um, allow public access to the game. I always leave that no, I don't want everybody to see this. Um, allow players to import their own characters. I always put this yes in case I'm in a bind and I don't have time to import it. Uh, I want them to be able to bring a, a character over if, if they so choose. Um, Really what we're doing is here in default game settings. This is where our bread and butter is going to be. I personally um, really like to set up my pages as 40 by 30. It's a little bit bigger than what I need, but I always like to have that little bit of extra space to work with in case I'm piecing a couple of maps together or putting some things together um, that don't necessarily fit into a smaller sheet. You can always go back on a sheet by sheet basis or a page by page basis and uh, change up what size you need. But I always like to start by 40 by 30. I feel it's a pretty good size. Um, the scale, I am in the US and I'm used to D&D. &D. I like five feet. That's a five foot square. That's the standard, that's what I use. Um, grid, I do use the grid. I like the grid. Some people don't and that's okay. Uh, but I keep the grid box ticked and it is one unit. Uh, each, each grid is one unit. I keep it as a square and it's the typical 5E e measurement. Um, I, I leave the opacity and the color alone. If you want to tweak that, that's up to you. Um, big discussion here, uh, fog of war, advanced fog of war, and dynamic lighting. My personal opinion is that unless you are going to be doing that for every map, it's best to leave this unticked. Um, I do use fog of war and I do use dynamic lighting in some of my games, but it's not on every map. It's on a map by map uh, basis or, it, or a page by page basis. So I leave this blank and if I'm doing it, I build my page, I go into that page's individual settings and I choose Fog of War or Dynamic Lighting or Advanced Fog of War. I, I, it's, I find it's easier to leave it blank and dial it up when I need it rather than tick it all and then undo it. It's, it's just a little bit easier for me. That covers that default tokens. Um, I just leave these blank because your players and what you're gonna have a little bit later will fill that in. That's not really that important right now. Um, the aura, that's not anything you'll use at this moment, that can come later. Uh, show nameplate is important. I do leave this unticked because I don't want my playing characters to see, always see my NPC names or my monster names. So I leave nameplate unticked. Uh, something I do tick, by default this is unticked, where it's name C player permissions, I do leave that so that players can see the other players' names. I do leave that. Um, however, I do leave bar one, two, bar three, all of those unticked so that they can't see their armor classes, their speeds, their, uh, their HPs, and that applies also for um, monsters or things like that. I don't, I don't want them to know 
what, how many hit points a monster has left. So I, by default, leave these blank, but I do tick this one for the players. Um, emits light. This comes into the dynamic lighting thing. Um, really, this is for people who have an aura, um, things like that, or, or if you're building a torch itself. We'll get into that in, in a later episode. Um, that would be a light emitting thing. However, by default, this is not ticked, has sight. I do tick it. Even though I don't use dynamic lighting in every map, I do tick has sight. I do set it at 360, which is the default, and I do set it as the multiplier is one, which is the default. Um, this just ensures me that anything I bring in down the road always can see if I'm using a, a dynamic lighting thing. Um, the multiplier is always one because that is the standard for a player or a character without dark vision. If you have dark vision, you can set that multiplier to two. Um, advanced dark vision. There are other ways to tweak it to, to make it work a little better, and that will also come out with the, the emits light thing. Um, An advanced fog of war, I also leave this blank just for the sake of keeping the boxes unticked up there. So at this point, we can save it, and you now have a template for every game. So every uh, or every every page, every page you create in your game will follow those rules. So if you find that something's not working, you can always come back to the default or game default settings and change them. And going forward, everything will then follow those rules you set. Um, other things down here, access compendium, I determine by character sheet, I leave. Share my compendium with players. I do tick yes in case there is, you know, like I have the player's handbook and some other stuff like that. I want them to be able to access it, so I do click yes to let them share it. Um, I'd already selected the character sheet template, so I leave that. Um, default sheet settings, NPC. If you tick this, any new character coming in, uh, be it a monster or a player character, will start with uh, an NPC card style sheet. Um, I always just leave this unticked, and as I bring in monsters or, or other NPCs, if I want them to be NPCs, I fix that at that time. Um, other things that are important down here, role queries. I always choose always roll advantage. Uh, for the speed of the game, I think it's faster if advantage is always rolled. Uh, in the chat window, it will come up a left and a right roll. Uh, we always play the roll on the left is a single roll. So if you're not rolling with advantage or disadvantage, it's just a straight roll. The, the box on the left will be your roll. And that's just to keep things moving. It means players don't have to choose on their sheet whether they're rolling with advantage or disadvantage or uh, a query box to pop up to say, do you want to roll with advantage or disadvantage? It just keeps things faster. Whisper rolls to GM, I always have it as never. Since we do stream online, we want the viewers to be able to see what the players are rolling. So that stays up. Um, auto damage roll, by default, it is do not auto roll damage. Uh, we choose to auto roll damage and crit for, again, the speed of the game. It keeps things going faster. You don't have to then make another click to, to roll your damage. It just rolls right there with it. Um, it just speeds things up. A lot of these other things you're not going to mess with, you don't need to touch. Um, the things I do tick down here, or the things I do set up down here are bar values. This is something, um, it's a personal preference of mine, you can do with it what you want. Um, but the players and NPCs and monsters all have three bars. I like to assign certain things so I can see them, uh, it's just the, the way it works for me. I like my bar one to be speed, my bar two to be AC, and my bar three to be hit points. Um, it's just something that works for me, and that's that's the way it, it goes. So I put those in there, and I hit Save Changes. Now everything is official, um, and we can pop in real quick and take a look at the individual page settings. Um, launch our game. And here we go. Let me, this was something from previous. I can go fix this. I had accidentally made each one too big, but this gives you an idea of individually customizing each page. Um, so what I like to do, and a couple of these things are gonna look different because I've got this VTT add-in and it, it changes the way things look, but primarily what you've got up here is the page toolbar. Page toolbar by default will come across the screen this way and it will show you a thumbnail of each map 
Um, and the way I have it is a drop down. I find it more effective that way for me. I don't have to scroll left and right. I can look down. Um, but I create a, I take a page and I make it a, a, what I call a token copy page. And this is where I go and I load all of my player tokens. Anybody I think that's going to be playing the game, if it's like down the road and I've got someone coming in as a guest, I put their token in here and it's a place I can always go to find a good token of them. Uh, that way I don't have to remember where they are. I can, if I need one, I can grab them and you can grab more than one at a time. You can click across and, and drag and copy, move to another page and paste. So I like to set that up from the beginning and I leave it up and it's always my first one and it's always a safe place for me to go get that. So for example, if one of my players was in Aarakocra um, and I needed to bring him to another page, I could highlight, click and drag, and if there's more than one in there, like for example, like maybe I have a whole party of Aarakocras and I need to bring them with me, I can click select all of them, control C to copy, I can then switch to the new page, click anywhere in the page, hit paste, and you've got your party with you. Um, whatever the hit points are and whatever the settings are for each of those, it will bring along with it. So I always keep full health point um, or hit point ones in the token uh, token page to copy off of. So if you're moving and they don't have hit points, you may have to copy from each page. But in just a general setup, like if we're moving to a town and they've had a long rest, everything's reset, um, it's just a safe place to always go have a good reference for that and that's that's really it for today we've covered um, most of the easy settings and the initial setup here and this gets you a, a good page to to have a reference for your for your player tokens so going forward uh, again I do have a, a little one at home and I can't always uh, make these videos quickly um, but in episode two, what we're going to be looking at is the VTT suite, and that's this down here. Um, VTT suite is a really cool add-in for Chrome and Firefox uh, browsers, and it allows you to do a lot of cool stuff like animated backgrounds and have more control over Roll20, like the way this dropdown looks, um, and, and some of the other things like that. So we'll get into that in the next class. But for now, thank you for joining me, and have a good game.